Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Migrant Collective Stories. Today I am with Viviana Castrillon, she's from Colombia, Bogota, she has been eight years in Australia, she's mom and she's an entrepreneur, founder of Digital Strategy BNE, and she has a, a long background in marketing uh, in digital marketing uh, she works with small businesses and entrepreneurs and she helps them to capitalize their digital channels and she's based in brisbane she's in queensland lucky you girl <laughs> thank you for being with us hi vivi no. hi Hime. how are you i'm good thank you Hey, thank you so honor. much for inviting me. Yeah, it's an honor uh, to be with you and have you. And thanks for sharing your story and your knowledge about marketing. I have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start for the first one. How did you get to Australia? Oh, <laughs> um, well, the, the short version of the story is that I got here as a student. Uh -huh. um <clears throat> not really because i needed to to learn english because um like i learned english when i was a child so by the time that i got here i had a good level of english it was it was more like it was a way to get here because um what i wanted to do was just to travel around and mm -hmm. maybe visit new cultures and all of that and the opportunity to come to Australia just show up in, in, in basically in my door. And um, and the way to get here was as a student. So I came here to to to, to study IELTS and and that was it. Mm. And what about your working experience here? What is your current work and in what other areas have you been performing? Okay, so at the moment, um, so as you said, I'm an entrepreneur, I have my own company um, and I work from, from home, from my office in my house. Um, and, uh, and this has been like, I started as a sole, sole trader, but then last year I actually create my company and this is like a company now. Um, what jobs have I done here in Australia? Well, I did a lot of things, mainly in marketing. Mm -hmm. So probably I was one of the lucky ones that I got um, like the professional background uh, job here in Australia, even though I was a student and I have all the hours restriction. Um, but for some reason, and I remember that like I had a friend at, at that time and she was like, why are you doing that, Viviana? And I was like, well, because I so, like that's supposed like the students supposed to do that. So um, after my first job that it was in marketing, that finished and I, I had to look for another job and I just got scared and I was looking for things that they were not in my field even though I had experience here in Australia mm -hmm. and I had the English. Mm -hmm. So um, I found a job in, in a juice bar. Uh -huh. And I remember that I, I also got a job in cleaning. And, and, and that was because I looked for it because I thought that like the first one was like a lucky strike and that that's what the students had to do. And my friend was like, what are you talking about? Like, you shouldn't do that. Well, anyway, I lasted in that cleaning job a week because it wasn't really like what I wanted. Um, and in the juice bar, I lasted for almost, I think it was two years. Uh, and then I, that finished and i actually like stopped 
and think and say, no, I, I, I really want to do something like in my professional background. So I put my CV and I still, I was a student, so I still have the 20 hours in impediment. Mm -hmm. Oh, no impediment, but like, you know, regulation. And uh, and then I put it in with, um, I, what is the name of that? You know, that, that people that look job, uh, that looks like uh, advice mm -hmm. no no no, no. It, it's it's like a company that hires people for other companies at the moment i just recruitancy companies yeah a recruitment anyway so like i got my cv there and they found me another job with an australian business in marketing and i was there for a while as well and then eventually um you know, jumping from jobs to jobs. Um, a friend, uh, I asked a friend, I said, hey, I need my CV a little bit more professional. And she was like, okay, yeah, I can help you. So she checked my my my, my CV and she said, oh, uh, do you do marketing? I said, yeah. Oh, do you know how to do a website? And I said, yeah, well, yeah, I know how to do a website. And she was like, okay, do mine. So like, oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I organized like a, an ABN and all of that because I was like a contractor. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started the idea of being an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. like I was my own boss. I, I don't like to say I'm not a boss. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was my own leader. I, I, I was leading this project and, and it was very exciting. And it gave me like another another way to do things. Not not always chasing a job, but also to chasing a dream. So, mm. what is the the best part of being an independent uh, worker? I mean, the leader of your of your project. What is the best part? I think the best part is in like the positive impact that you have. In, in other people's dreams, whether they are entrepreneurs or they are people looking for work, like professional work here in Australia. So I think it's, it's that impact and giving them the options. Like as an entrepreneur myself, I can put myself in, in, in other people's shoes, you know, like entrepreneurs. So like I know the struggles with budgets, uh, with time, with tasks, with many things. Um, so I feel that um, that that could be like a, an advantage point, but also is the happiness that I can see in their faces when things are working, when they can actually see their project in a better way, like a, that actually they have the structure of the concept and they can they can verbalize it. It's it's amazing. And like the, you know, that light in their eyes when they can see themselves in the future being so successful and so happy because they have achieved something. So I think um, the best part of my job um, is that, is the impact that I can have in other people's dream. I dreams. love it. And, and let me ask you, so which one is the most difficult part? <sighs> I think, and, and, and I, I think um, the most difficult part is something that is an ongoing part. And in my opinion, the most difficult part is believing in yourself. Mm. Like I have found that the biggest wall in your life could be yourself. Mm. Sometimes, um, sometimes you, compare yourself with other people and you and you see all the success out there and you said no nah, that's not enough I, I'm not enough I cannot do it um I don't have the skills I don't have this even though there are people telling you hey you are so amazing hey what you are doing and it's funny because if you actually go out and talk to people people are doing exactly the same with you 
So like it happened to me the other day, um, I went to this talk, like I was invited as a panelist uh, in an event uh, talking about female founders, uh, females in leadership. And and they were like, like when, when I finished the talk, like people came to me and they were like, oh, I feel, you know, like I feel you so much in this part and in this other one. And and I, I've been there and all of that. And people were looking at me like, oh, I have everything figured out. I have nothing figured out. Like mm -hmm. this is a process. This is, this is the road. And every day it has their ups and it has their downs. You know, like they are days that I'm so happy and so excited and I believe myself and I'm like, you know, Rose in the Titanic and <laughs> the queen of the world. I'm exactly like that. But they are days that I don't believe myself, that I don't believe in myself and I cry and I feel desperate and, and I'm like, what am I doing? I have two children. I have a mortgage. I have all of this. Like, you know, mm -hmm. so that's normal. But I feel that most of the times people they they just get stuck there and they just don't keep you know like dirty keep mm -hmm. swimming mm -hmm. so like, keep that's what you swimming. need to do yeah well, so keep swimming yeah keep swimming keep, keep pushing keep keep dreaming yeah and uh, um so in, in your experience here in Australia, what do you think are the obstacles that migrants face when they want to improve their working situations? Again, I feel like it's, what happened to me, you know, like people sometimes they get into this idea that because you are a migrant, because you have an accent, because maybe you don't speak that well, um, you only ha have work in in like cleaning or food delivery or you know all of this stuff, and you actually don't give it a give it a try of like sending your resume or actually looking for like your professional work, you know. Mm. I remember I like that was that was funny. I was here already. Uh, I was in in my school when I saw a girl that studied with me back in Colombia, mm -hmm. and we we are friends since Colombia. Um, we didn't know that neither of us were here, mm -hmm. and then that day we we saw each other. Hey, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, time passed. And one day I was talking with her and she told me, she said to me, I'm so tired. Like, I don't like the cleaning job. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm not doing anything and blah, blah, blah. And I said, have you tried, you know, sending resumes or whatever with your professional? Like, no. I said, what are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. Do you want that the opportunity just knock on your door? That's not going to happen. Not many people have that. Mm -hmm. So like, go and at least push yourself out there and 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 try that if you get a no well that's life but what if you get a yes you know so I, I think love that it. i think it's those mind barriers that as a as a migrant you create in your mind creating yourself and and they don't let you push harder so I have another question. Do you think the Aussie culture is inclusive enough for migrants, for to migrants working in skilled positions? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> so mm -hmm. this is okay. just an honest, honest conversation. You <laughs> my, my idea just is to know how have been your experience well and actually also, in my experience it has been really easy like okay yeah but no really really <clears throat> sorry no no like 100 percent easy no i have my struggles but i think that if i compare myself with other people my road has been really easy but um also culture 
So like on one hand, they have all these politics and all these rules and and things that make make them inclusive mm -hmm. and that um, they want to be you know a welcoming of other cultures and everything but on the other one you can find racism you know like you can find people talking to you like you are an absolute dumb person mm -hmm. like it happened to me one lady oh where are you from colombia hi how are you why are you talking like that i speak english <laughs> you know <laughs> so um and they are people that assume that because we are from you know from colombia from chile from whatever a latin country then they assume all these ideas that are out there that we are the same and it's not true so um is easy maybe not but it's not impossible mm -hmm. and the thing is yeah. that um the thing is that there are a lot of stories out there that can that can prove that is not impossible you know everything in life that is absolutely worth it, you need to effort for it. You need to put effort, you need to put work, you need to put tears, you need to put sweat. So like, if you expect that everything is in a, in a silver platter, well, probably that's not going to happen. If as a, as a migrant, wherever the country you come from, you stay with your community and you only speak your language and you listen to your music and you are watching even the national television in your country and you are eating the food that you used to eat in your country. My suggestion is go back to your country because over there is cheaper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you are here, embrace the culture, embrace the diversity, get out of that comfort zone and push harder. Because it is possible. It is possible to find a PR. It is possible to stay here as a resident. It is possible to find a professional job. It is possible. But you need to look for those opportunities. Wow, such a strong message. Like uh, the biggest wall could be yourself. Be entrepreneurs is a process and push yourself to try it's like those are like super super strong messages and sometimes we think uh, like we know it but when you have to hear it again and at other time and another time and again and again and in some point this make like a click in your brain in your mindset Awesome. Yeah, so now well, that's 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 a very important one, the mindset. The mindset. You know, like uh I, I like to listen um those tech talks about like mindset and positivity and um and all of that. And it's true. If if you are angry, you only at, attract angerness, you know. If you are sad, you are going to surround yourself around sadness you know like when you are sad you want to listen sad music and the day is gray and you know like it seems like everything around you is in the same mood so you really attract what you want so like if you want to stay here you need to surround yourself with people that actually speak english and no i'm not i'm not talking about you know like people that I'm not talking about like, for example, and 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 I'm sorry, eh, but I don't want to cause any trouble. But um, <laughs> like, if you are Colombian and you are living with a uh, Brazilian, and you have to speak English because you cannot understand each other's language, that is not the English that I'm I'm talking about. I'm talking like actually go and find mm -hmm. a job, even if it's a cleaning job, but like with an Australian, mm -hmm. someone that was born and raised here and that they can speak English. Yeah, because if, if, if it's this example, the Colombian and the Brazilian, the Brazilian is learning English, you are learning English. Mm. And when you 
you know, when you know English and you are listening to them, all the mistakes that they are making and all of that, and they they are very comfortable because they are making the same mistakes. Mm. So when they go and talk with an Australian or with a British or with Canadian or with a USA person, and and they are talking, well, the confidence is not going to be there because mm. they've been talking, they've been speaking in English, but in a bad English, it's still. Something that is beautiful from Australians is that when they hear you accent, mm -hmm. they know that you are not from here and they slow down. Not, not like the person that I talked before, but like they slow down a little bit. So like they kind of pronounce it better and they want you to understand what they are saying. So that's good. Mm. Yeah, and in the end, English is everything. Because you can get, uh, first of all, a good confidence if you don't have like a good uh, English level. And if you don't have this confidence, you're not going to apply or to jobs in your area, or your profession, or uh, you're not going to be keen enough to chase your dreams. Yeah, but it, it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be a stop like English is is like a riding a bike yeah so like when you when you start you riding on your bike you are wobbly um, mm -hmm. and you need you know the wheels the, the supporting mm -hmm. wheels and mm -hmm. and you need someone that help you and push you and whatever mm -hmm. yeah so like everything is a process mm -hmm. you didn't you didn't bond with um you were not you, like you didn't grow up with the language so you shouldn't expect to have a hundred percent perfect language you are going to make mistakes that's good because you are a human you even make mistakes in your own language how you are going to expect to not make mistakes in other languages that you learn you know but but really if you analyze everything that you have done you know where you are not everyone is in the place that you are right now. You are here in Australia by yourself. You have done so many stuff to maintain yourself here. And that's valuable. That takes courage. And that is the important message. Like, yes, English opens gates, opens windows, opens doors. But everything is a process. You need to believe in yourself. My mom, my mom is 60 years old. My mom never learned how to speak English. And when she's here, she's able to talk with drivers, mm -hmm. with, with um, shop assistants, with anyone. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, how you do that? You don't speak English. She said, I don't know. I just, you know, start talking. <laughs> and, and, and it's that confidence that she has in her. And is that, well, they are going to understand. Even mm -hmm. if I just have to make myself understand with science or whatever, they are going to understand. So like the point is that mm -hmm. the only barrier in your life could be just yourself and that wow. mindset. Wow, I, let me repeat that. The only barrier could be uh, in your mind, could be yourself. I think this is the, the main message to everyone. Yeah, I I think the, the this this part of this conversation it's been really interesting because yeah, it, always I hear the the than the the English obviously have a, a good level of English is uh, the main key, but the thing that you're saying to me is the beyond that is the attitude like change your mindset. Mm -hmm. I I want to uh, keep talking about change the mindset because I want to just. Uh, touch the point about uh, um, digital strategy, BNE. Uh, how okay. did you get there? How did you get well, to the idea to be an entrepreneur? Um, well, I, I, as I told you, um, my friend checked my, my CV mm -hmm. and then she asked me to do um, a website and, mm -hmm. and from there, I started a whole road of finding myself. Okay. I have a friend uh -huh. uh, that I love 
and I uh -huh. always talk about her. Um, uh -huh. Her name is Cara Monroy. Uh -huh. um, and when I met her, um, it was because she made a video that talked about the differences between job, career, and purpose. Mm -hmm. And and what she said is that the job is what you do. So how you exchange uh, your time for money. Career is how you develop, you know, your career through your life and in this corporate ladder. And then your purpose is that thing that actually is within yourself is that emotion, is that mm -hmm. energy, is that feeling that you can do more, you know? And that is is that spark that thrives and that leads your life through ups and downs. So I I I I, I listened that video, mm -hmm. I watched that video and I was like I, something that is really, I really don't like of corporate jobs mm -hmm. is that in those jobs, you find way too many bosses and not really many leaders. Mm -hmm. And that is so discouraging because I found so many people, you know, that in the moment that I was myself, that I was a little bit creative, mm -hmm. that I was a little bit energetic, that I was a little bit, you know, oh, we can do this better, or maybe we can find a better way to do this or whatever. They were like, no, no, that's the process. You have to do it like that, and that's it. And if you don't like it, suck it up. And that was so horrible. Yeah. And what's the difference between a boss and a leader? Well, a leader is someone that um, that find that spark in yourself and flame it, you know, like make it bigger, that push push you towards being bigger, that let you extend your wings and and let you fly. Uh, is that person that is with you in the good and the bad is not the person that is giving you orders is is someone that is inspiring you almost so i'm not saying that i'm that mm -hmm. but i definitely not a boss mm -hmm. and i don't want to be one or be with one mm -hmm. um and i feel like Every day when I wake up and I wake up with energy and I want to do so many stuff and I want to create so much impact and I want to help my community and I want to help my female community and everything, that is the spark that takes me to all the ups and downs. Because as I said before, mm -hmm. like this is not just roses. No, there are moments that you feel like, oh, Christ, <laughs> you know, but is that discipline is that is that um is that emotion is that this is my dream and i'm going to work for it and i'm going to show my kids and the next generations that it is possible that if they want to work eight to five it's fine if they want to spend their whole life working for other people it's fine but if they don't want that they are another option and it's possible. Probably you are going to work more, but still it's possible. Yeah, I, I think everyone has a superpower. So as you said, we, we choose what we want to do with our superpowers. Some people like, a, a, for example, the office work some people is more creative look uh, like more artistic jobs uh, but in 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 the way that we know what is uh, our superpowers we can have this sparkle than you said and we also can um, be like a huge um, like a huge uh, change factor change in the community because be positive and be energetic and uh, uh, know what you want in life, what, 
things you like, in, in what areas you want to uh, work, for example, or which one is your purpose, uh, in the way that you know that you can help others and inspire others. And also you can, we, everyone in, in this community have a task to do. So which one, always I, I ask this thing, which one is your superpower, girl, which one? And I'm happy uh, to know that you find it. You find it and you are, uh, because a lot of people is still exploring, you know, this is not like, a, a, I don't know, you, sometimes I don't think you, you wake up with an idea and you find your path. It's like a, a huge road to, to go. As you said, it's a process. It's a process, yeah. Yeah, so uh, my next question is, um, what do you want to achieve with the digital strategy, B and E? <laughs> Sorry. What do I want to achieve? Okay, so on one hand, um, I want to fulfill my dream as an entrepreneur. So I want to work for myself and I want to, to be self-sustained. You know, like um, I want to be successful in my work. On the other hand, I want to, I want to help my community. So my, my job is like, I can work with any entrepreneur or a small business, but I really like to work with small businesses, Latin or migrant small businesses, um, because I feel like we can speak the same language. And I'm not talking about Spanish, I'm talking about all the struggles that migrants have, mm -hmm. as well as entrepreneurs. So, um, <clears throat> I feel like if I can achieve that, if I can be self-sustained with my work, plus I can help all these migrant entrepreneurs and small businesses, um, that's that's enough for me. Like I have done my mm -hmm. my little part in the world. Yeah, and I think this is a uh, this is essential because um, the day of the entrepreneurs it's it's so long, like they are worried from production to have the product in the market and also about all the marketing uh, strategies. Uh, and they are sometimes just one or two people. So in the end, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard for everyone. So what do you think yeah. are the, the main maybe mistakes or difficulties that entrepreneurs have? thinking uh, in the marketing area. Mm. Okay, so I don't know if in Chile you guys have the same saying, but in Colombia we have a saying that is that goes like this, um, zapatero a tus zapatos, so oh, yeah. shoemaker to your shoes, right? Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's about focusing in what you do best. So like if you are a shoemaker, focusing your shoes, right? Yeah. But as an entrepreneur, you, you need to develop so many skills around that because it's not just you making shoes or bread or websites or whatever, it's all the admin work that goes with it when you are an entrepreneur. In marketing, people focus in actions. And that's uh, like with my friends, you know, like I have a lot of friends in the same field and we agree that like people, they come to you and they are like, I want a logo. Okay, yeah, we can develop a logo, but a logo is just an iconographic mm -hmm. object. What do you want to communicate with that? What do you want that says? There are, there are two ways to communicate something. There is the verbal one, what you said, and there is the non-verbal one, what you see. So like, if, if your focus is in, in a logo, you are forgetting so many stuff around that. And people believe that marketing is a website, is a logo, it's, a, you know, it's all these little parts, it's social media. It's, 
and it and that's part of marketing but there is something that is called a strategy that is the glue of all of them there is the one that is going to tell you the abc of a plan for you to go from point a to point b you know and and that's the thing that like as an entrepreneur you focus in actions but you need to like maybe look a little bit further and analyze situations from from a strategy point you know like we do strategies all the time if you are going to plan a trip you have to do a strategy you have to you know you have to know how many people are going to the trip uh are you going to go there by plane by boat or by car how many kids like are you going with kids so you cannot have like a resort for all the adults because they are not going to receive you you know and if you are going by car and you have kids you need to understand that like big trips are not possible so you need to have speed stops mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you are going, for example, with your grandma and she's 90 years old, you need to have a, like a comfortable car, probably better a plane, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so like all that thinking is what makes the things that run smoothly, yeah? If you don't think that, if you said, we are going on a trip, okay, grab your things, put the things in the car and let's go. And you are not planning anything, nine out of ten things are going to be rough so it's exactly the same with marketing if you don't plan like oh give me a website okay okay create a website oh but this website is not selling well what are you communicating mm -hmm. what are you saying what are you saying in your supporting channels you know mm -hmm. oh but you don't have you don't have a plan you don't have a funnel you don't have anything you just have mm -hmm. a website with a bunch of information but like you don't even have it come you know um, you are not analyzing the data you are not getting any data you are not getting anything so what is the purpose of a website spending all that money if you don't even have a clear branding mm -hmm. if you don't know who is your competitors who is your uh, potential client what are your goals? What do you want? You know, like they say in Colombia, in Colombia, uh, parents always ask, or adults always ask kids, mm -hmm. what do you want? What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh -huh. And it's true. What, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be in a year in your business? Where do you want to be, you know? If you don't know that, then how are you going to know the road to get there? It's impossible. So okay. first, find the X in your map, and then you will find the road. Mm. So yeah, and make a, make a plan. Awesome. So the recommendation is make make a plan. This is the the main for in uh, thinking in the. Um, in the marketing area, the recommendation for the brands is know what you want and make a road for it. I love it. I love it. I <laughs> think uh, we have so much wisdom in this little chit chat. <laughs> I love your recommendations about uh, put. Um, let me just highlight some of your words. Uh, one is uh, put effort, tears and sweat. And the other one is uh, embrace the culture. And the last one, thinking in, in the business, uh, uh, in the small business and entrepreneurs, uh, find what you want and make a plan. Yeah. I love it. I think um, we, we are done. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for this, uh, for this time. Just, I want you. Uh, I want you to share where the people can find you on social media and uh, which one is your website. Okay, so um, if you want to follow me, uh, yeah. you can do it on Instagram or Facebook as Digital Asecas. Um, digital A 
S E C A S, secas. That means in Spanish just digital. Um, I I like to only talk about digital um, tools and strategies and so on. Um, if you want to find me in LinkedIn, you can find me as Viviana Castellano Lave. And if you want to go to my website, where is everything, you can go to Digital SB, S from Strategy, B from BNE, dot com. I love it. I love it. I highly recommend your uh, Instagram because it's uh, a. It, it's very handy. You have a lot of techniques for entrepreneurs. So they, they can start, well, making making a plan with your recommendations there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, the idea is to, you know, like try to give content that really helps people, mm -hmm. um, you know, techniques, tools, um, ideas, basically. Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Vivi, for, for this time, for sharing your story, for sharing your, your experience uh, working here in your area and for inspire us and uh, for work in this uh, migrant area in, and in the women area that I think is, uh, is essential in these times. So thank you for your time. Yeah, do you want to say something? No, well, the only thing that I wanted to add is that you said that thank you for, you know, working in the female area and all of mm. that is, I'm, um, I'm a believer that women can work together and that we can empower ourselves and that we can, you know, we can support other women for them to see them grow and, you know, stand their wings and whatever. Um, we grew up hearing, you know, all those talks about, oh, women only work um, for cat fights and, and women are jealous of other women and men can, you know, like uh, hide their, their things from their wives and whatever because they can work in community, but women, they can't. And that's not true. And that's something that we need to stop believing. And we really need to um, embrace our femalehood. We are powerful. Like think of every, every single thing that you do in your life, all the hats that you put every day, you know, like as a mom, as an entrepreneur, as a friend, as a daughter, as a wife, as a, so many stuff. And you do it perfectly or not perfectly because we are not perfect, mm -hmm. but you do it. And you can and handle that. You, All these and pressures. you can handle that. Yeah. And you can handle the pressure of, uh, you know, having toddlers and they are in their terrible tools and having a husband that uh, is is feeling no confident in the in whatever and then uh, all the drama that your friends may have and everything and you can handle and that and you can thrive so like if you can do that everyone can do it and but you really need a support circle and it can be another female. Why not? Like, I, I feel happy when I see a friend of mine thriving and growing and being successful. We are not jealous. We are not that, you know, we, we, we are not that people that we were told we were. We are empowered females with the bulls, you know, we're grabbing the bulls from the thing and that's it. So like we need to start believing in ourselves and supporting other women. Yeah, and everyone's do something different. We are not something we, sometimes I think we, we thought like uh, we, we have competitors, like we, we see others as a competitors and not as a supporting community. So mm -hmm. my, I always said uh, every, everyone do different things. And uh, for example, I, I found you because of Latinos Extraordinarios. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah because I, I, I hear your interview there. 
um, but they they make you an interview also, but in another area. And now we are talking. Uh, they have a podcast. I have a video. Uh, they are uh, more interested in in uh, highlight like the uh, Latinos experience. I'm trying to highlight the working experience. So in the end, we can support each other. I think uh, the same as you. We we are not. Uh, this is not a race. Who do uh, better or who do more? Let's work together. Let's work together. And let's empower women and let's empower uh, our migrant community. Yeah. So thank you, Vivi. Thank you for being here. I, I sent you a big hug. Uh, I, I hope uh, it's uh, warmer there in Brisbane than it is in Melbourne. <laughs> Because here it's freezing cold. It, it most likely is, um, but it's still, it's not warm enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Well, thank you so much and have a nice uh, afternoon. Thank you, Hime, for inviting me and thank you for, for doing this. This is an amazing project and 100% supported by me. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love your idea. And I wish you the best with digital strategy DNA. Okay. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.